Hey folks, before we dive into today's video, make sure to like the video and leave a subscribe for more and longer stories. Let's enjoy. Story number one. Let's rewind the clock by 25 years, back to a time when life felt like a series of endless adventures waiting to be explored. I was just a teenager then, full of curiosity and a thirst for excitement that often led me down unexpected paths. It was a crisp autumn evening when it all began, the night that would etch itself into the fabric of my memories forever. My friends and I had gathered at my buddy's old farmhouse, a place that always seemed to carry whispers of forgotten secrets in its ancient walls. We were in search of something to break the monotony of small-town life, something to inject a dose of thrill into our mundane existence. And that's when someone suggested it. The Ouija board. It was like a relic from another time, tucked away in the dusty corners of the attic, waiting to be rediscovered. None of us really knew what we were getting into. We had heard the stories, of course, the tales of spirits and ghosts communicating through the board of messages from beyond the veil. But we were young and naive, thinking ourselves invincible to the unseen forces that lurked in the shadows. We set up the board in the dimly lit living room, the soft glow of candles casting dancing shadows on the walls. We sat in a circle, our fingers lightly resting on the planchette, our hearts beating with a mixture of excitement and nervousness. And then we asked a question that would change everything. Is there anyone here with us? At first there was nothing but silence. We exchanged nervous glances, wondering if we had made a mistake. If we were just playing a silly game, that would lead to nothing but disappointment. But then, ever so slowly, almost imperceptibly, the planchette began to move. It glided across the board, spelling out words that seemed to materialize out of thin air. We held our breath, our eyes wide with astonishment and a hint of fear. The messages that came through were cryptic at first like whispers from a distant realm. The spirit claimed to be someone who had once lived in the farmhouse, someone who had a message for us, a warning even. We were captivated, drawn into a world of mystery and intrigue that we had only ever read about in books or seen in movies. We asked questions about the future, about love and loss and everything in between. And the answers we received were uncanny, too accurate to be dismissed as mere coincidence. But then, as the night wore on and the messages grew darker, a chill settled over the room. The spirit spoke of death and despair, of a darkness that threatened to engulf us all. We tried to laugh it off, to pretend it was all just a game, but deep down, we knew there was something sinister lurking in the shadows, and then, just like that, it was over. The planchette went still, the messages ceased, and we were left sitting there in stunned silence. Had we really just communicated with a spirit from beyond the grave, or was it all just a figment of our overactive imaginations? We didn't have much time to dwell on it. The next day, News spread like wildfire through our small town. My friend, the one whose farmhouse we had played in, was found dead. The official cause was suicide, but the circumstances were shrouded in mystery. We were devastated, grappling with grief and guilt. Had our actions somehow triggered something dark and malevolent? Had we invited a curse upon ourselves by dabbling in forces beyond our understanding. I tried to put it out of my mind, to move on with my life and forget about that fateful night. But the whispers, the shadows, 
They followed me everywhere I went. I heard voices in the dead of night. Felt a presence watching me from the shadows. And then, just when I thought I couldn't take it anymore, I found the Ouija board hidden away in the attic, untouched since that night, twenty-five years ago. It was like a siren's call, beckoning me back into its twisted embrace. Against my better judgment, I set it up once again, alone this time, in the same dimly lit room where it all began. I asked the question that had haunted me for a quarter of a century. Is anyone there? And to my shock and horror, the planchette moved. It spelled out a name, a name I hadn't heard in years, a name that sent a chill down my spine. It was my friend, the one who had died all those years ago. And he had a message for me, a message that would change everything. But that's a story for another time. For now, all I can say is this. The Ouija board's whisper may be faint, but its impact is anything but. The message from beyond, spelled out by the planchette on that fateful night, was like a thunderclap in the stillness of my life. My friend's name, clear as day, appeared before me, as if he was reaching out from the other side. At first, I was in shock. How could this be possible? Had we truly made contact with the spirit of my deceased friend? The rational part of my mind screamed that it was all a coincidence, a trick of the subconscious. But deep down, I couldn't shake the feeling that something supernatural was at play. The days that followed were filled with a sense of unease. I couldn't escape the feeling of being watched, of unseen eyes following my every move. Strange occurrences became commonplace. Objects would move on their own. Strange noises echoed through the house at night, and a chill seemed to linger in the air even on the warmest days. I tried to rationalize it all away, to convince myself that it was just my imagination running wild. But the whispers persisted, growing louder and more insistent with each passing day. It was as if the spirit of my friend was trying to communicate with me, to deliver a message that had been left unsaid. I found myself drawn back to the Ouija board, unable to resist the pull of its mysterious allure. I set it up once again, hoping to find answers to the questions that haunted me. But the messages that came through were cryptic, fragmented, like pieces of a puzzle waiting to be assembled. I delved deeper into the world of the occult, seeking guidance from books and online forums. I learned about the history of Ouija boards, about the dangers of communicating with spirits, about the potential consequences of meddling with forces beyond our understanding. But the more I learned, the more I realized how little I truly knew. The world of the supernatural was vast and complex, filled with mysteries that defied explanation. And somewhere in the midst of it all, my friend's spirit lingered, a silent presence that refused to be ignored. I sought out mediums and psychics, hoping to make sense of the messages that continued to haunt me. Some claimed to have made contact with my friend's spirit, offering messages of comfort and closure. Others warned of the dangers of delving too deeply into the unknown, of inviting malevolent entities into my life. But amidst the conflicting advice and the whispers of the supernatural, one thing became clear. The Ouija board held the key to unlocking the mysteries that surrounded me. It was a doorway, a portal to realms unseen, and I was determined to uncover the truth, no matter the cost. So, I returned to the board once again, my heart pounding with a mixture of fear and anticipation. I asked the question that had been burning in my mind since that first night. Friend, are you there? And to my astonishment, the planchette moved. It spelled out a message, a message that sent shivers down my spine. I am here, but not alone. Beware the darkness that lurks beyond. The message was cryptic, 
filled with a sense of urgency that I couldn't ignore. What did it mean? Who else was with my friend on the other side, and what darkness was it warning me about? I knew then that I had opened a door that I might not be able to close. The spirit world was a realm of uncertainty and peril, and I had stepped into it willingly, driven by a need for answers that only led to more questions. But I couldn't turn back now. The journey had begun, and I was determined to see it through to the end, no matter where it might lead. The warning for my deceased friend's spirit echoed in my mind, a haunting reminder of the dangers that lurked in the shadows of the unknown. But curiosity, tinged with a hint of fear, drove me forward. I had to unravel the mystery, to understand the darkness that threatened to engulf me. I delved deeper into the world of the supernatural, seeking out experts and practitioners who claimed to have knowledge of the spirit realm. I attended seances, participated in rituals, and consulted with mediums, hoping to make sense of the messages that continued to haunt me. One medium in particular stood out, a woman with eyes that seemed to pierce through the veil of reality. She claimed to have a connection to the spirit world, to be able to communicate with entities beyond our understanding. I met with her in a dimly lit room, the air thick with the scent of incense and anticipation. She closed her eyes, her hands resting on the Ouija board, and began to chant in a language I couldn't comprehend. The atmosphere shifted, the energy in the room becoming palpable. I felt a presence, a cold breeze that seemed to whisper secrets in my ear. The medium's voice changed, becoming deeper and more resonant, as if another entity had taken control. And then the messages started to come through. They were clearer than anything I had experienced before, as if the veil between worlds had been lifted. The spirit that spoke through the medium claimed to be a guide, a protector of lost souls, trapped in the realm between life and death. I asked about my deceased friend, about the darkness that had been alluded to in the previous messages. The spirit's response was chilling. It spoke of a malevolent force, a shadowy entity that fed on fear and despair lurking in the shadows of the spirit realm. I felt a chill run down my spine, a sense of foreboding that I couldn't shake. The medium urged caution, warning me of the dangers of delving too deeply into the unknown. But I was consumed by a thirst for knowledge, a need to understand the truth that had been hidden from me for so long. I continued my quest, seeking out how to dream ancient texts and forbidden knowledge that promised insights into the supernatural. I performed rituals, invoked spirits, and ventured into realms that few dared to tread. But with each step forward, the darkness seemed to grow stronger, its presence looming ever larger in my life. Strange occurrences became more frequent, a feeling of being watched, shadows that moved on their own, whispers in the dead of night that sent shivers down my spine. And then, one night, as I sat alone in my room, the Ouija board before me, I felt a presence unlike anything I had ever experienced before. The air grew cold, a chill that seeped into my bones as if the very essence of fear had taken form before me. The planchette moved, spelling out a message that sent terror coursing through my veins. I am here, and I am hungry. I knew then that I had crossed a line that I had invited something into my life that I couldn't control. The darkness had been unleashed, and I was its unwitting puppet, dancing to a tune of terror and despair. But even in the face of overwhelming fear, I couldn't turn away. The mystery had consumed me, driven me to the brink of madness, and I was determined to see it through to the end, no matter the cost. 
the journey was far from over, and the darkness that lurked beyond the veil was ready to claim its next victim. The message from the Ouija board, spelling out the chilling words, I am here, and I am hungry, echoed in my mind like a sinister mantra. It was a stark reminder of the danger I had unwittingly invited into my life, the darkness that lurked beyond the veil, hungry for something I couldn't comprehend. I tried to rationalize it all away, to convince myself that it was just my imagination running wild. But the signs were there, unmistakable in their ominous nature. Shadows seemed to move on their own, whispers followed me wherever I went, and a sense of dread hung in the air like a suffocating fog. I sought solace in research, scouring ancient texts and forbidden knowledge for clues to the entity that had been unleashed. I learned of demons and dark entities that fed on fear and despair, that preyed on the souls of the living for their own twisted purposes. But the more I learned, the more I realized how ill-equipped I was to face the darkness that surrounded me. It was a force beyond comprehension, a malevolent presence that defied explanation. I reached out to the medium who had first warned me of the dangers, hoping for guidance and protection, but her response was cryptic, filled with a sense of resignation. The darkness you have awakened is ancient and powerful, she said, her voice tinged with sadness. You must tread carefully, for it preys on the unwary and consumes the souls of the foolish. Her words sent a chill down my spine, a sense of impending doom that I couldn't shake. But even in the face of overwhelming fear, I couldn't turn away. The mystery had consumed me, driven me to the brink of madness, and I was determined to see it through to the end, no matter the cost. I returned to the Ouija board once again, the planchette feeling heavier in my hands, as if it carried the weight of the world on its wooden surface. I asked the question that had haunted me since that first night, the question that had unleashed the darkness. Who are you? What do you want? The planchette moved, spelling out a message that sent a shiver down my spine. I am the hunger that lurks in the shadows. I am the fear that grips your heart. I am the darkness that consumes all. The words were like a death knell, a proclamation of doom that echoed through the room. I felt a cold hand wrap around my heart, squeezing tighter with each passing moment. I knew then that I had to find a way to stop it, to banish the darkness back to the depths from whence it came. But the task seemed insurmountable, the odds stacked against me, and so I embarked on a journey into the heart of darkness, a journey that would test my courage, my sanity, and my very soul. The final confrontation loomed on the horizon, a battle between light and shadow, between hope and despair. But whether I would emerge victorious or fall prey to the darkness that threatened to consume me, only time would tell. The stage was set, the pieces in motion, and the fate of my soul hung in the balance. The end was near, and the darkness was ready to claim its prize. As the darkness closed in around me, a sense of urgency and dread consumed every fiber of my being. I knew that the final confrontation was inevitable, that I couldn't avoid the looming battle between light and shadow any longer. I sought out allies in the most unlikely of places, other seekers of the supernatural, those who had faced the darkness and lived to tell the tale. Together, we pooled our knowledge and resources, determined to find a way to banish the malevolent entity that had been unleashed. We delved into ancient texts and arcane rituals, seeking out the secrets of protection and purification. 
We gathered materials, holy water, blessed salt, sacred incense, and prepared ourselves for the battle ahead. The night of the confrontation arrived, the air heavy with anticipation and fear. We gathered in the room where it had all begun, the Ouija board at the center of our makeshift circle. I could feel the presence of the darkness looming just beyond the veil, its hunger palpable in the air, but I refused to be consumed by fear. I had come too far, faced too much, to back down now. We began the ritual, chanting incantations and invoking powers beyond our understanding. The room filled with an otherworldly energy, a mixture of hope and desperation that seemed to push back against the encroaching darkness. And then it happened. The planchette on the Ouija board began to move, not of its own accord, but guided by the combined will of those gathered in the room. It spelled out words of power and protection, symbols of ancient strength and resilience. The darkness fought back, lashing out with tendrils of shadow and despair. But we stood firm, our resolve unshakable, as we channeled the energy of the ritual into a final, decisive blow. With a burst of blinding light, the darkness was banished, driven back into the depths from whence it came. The room was filled with a sense of peace and relief, a feeling of victory against impossible odds. But the battle had taken its toll. I could feel the weight of the darkness lifting from my soul, leaving behind scars that would never fully heal. I had stared into the abyss and emerged changed, forever marked by the experience. As I stood in the aftermath of the confrontation, I knew that I had learned a valuable lesson, that some mysteries are best left unsolved, that some truths are too terrifying to comprehend. But despite the fear and the trauma, I couldn't regret the journey I had undertaken. It had tested my limits, pushed me to the brink, and ultimately made me stronger. And so I carry on, a survivor of the darkness, a testament to the resilience of the human spirit. The Ouija board remains a relic of a past I can never forget, a reminder of the dangers that lurk in the shadows, waiting to be unleashed by the curious and the brave. But I walk forward with caution now, my eyes open to the unseen forces that surround us, knowing that the darkness is never truly defeated, only held at bay by the flickering light of hope and determination. Story number two. The winter break had finally arrived, a much needed respite from the relentless grind of school. With excitement bubbling in our veins, my friends and I decided to embark on an adventure unlike any other. We rented an old cabin nestled deep within the serene, snow-covered mountains. The cabin, a quaint yet slightly eerie structure, exuded an air of mystery and intrigue. Its weathered wooden exterior told tales of years gone by, while the cozy interior promised warmth and comfort amidst the chilly winter landscape. We were thrilled at the prospect of spending our break in such a picturesque and secluded location, far away from the noise and chaos of city life. Our first day at the cabin was spent unpacking, exploring every nook and cranny, and marveling at the rustic charm that surrounded us. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting a golden hue over the snowy landscape, the cabin took on a magical quality, like something out of a storybook. However, it wasn't long before our idyllic retreat took a turn towards the inexplicable. It was during one of our exploratory missions within the cabin that we stumbled upon a hidden trapdoor 
concealed beneath a worn threadbare rug in the basement. Intrigued by this unexpected discovery, we gathered around as one of us lifted a trapdoor, revealing a set of creaky wooden stairs leading down into darkness. With a mix of curiosity and trepidation, we descended into the depths of the basement, our footsteps echoing in the stillness of the underground space. The basement was a stark contrast to the cozy ambiance of the cabin above. Dusty cobwebs adorned the corners, and the faint scent of mildew lingered in the air. As we ventured further, our eyes fell upon a piece peculiar sight. A small table positioned at the center of the room, adorned with an array of enigmatic objects. At the heart of the table lay an ancient Ouija board, its wooden surface weathered with age and etched with cryptic symbols. Surrounding it were a collection of old photographs, their faded images peering out at us with ghostly intensity, and a deck of tarot cards, each card bearing intricate designs that seemed to whisper secrets of the past. Despite the chill that seemed to seep into our bones, and the eerie atmosphere that pervaded the basement, we couldn't resist the allure of the mysterious objects before us. The Ouija board in particular beckoned us with the promise of unlocking hidden truths and communicating with the beyond, with a mixture of excitement and apprehension. We gathered around the table, our fingers hovering over the planchette of the Ouija board. The anticipation was palpable as we posed our first question into the void. Is there anyone here with us? At first, there was only silence, a tense, expectant silence that seemed to stretch on indefinitely. But then, almost imperceptibly, the planchette began to move, gliding across the surface of the Ouija board with an otherworldly grace. The letters it touched upon formed words that sent a shiver down my spine. A name, unfamiliar and tinged with a sense of foreboding, followed by a message that seemed to echo from a realm beyond our own. I am here, and I want to play. A wave of unease washed over us, the realization dawning that we had opened a door to something beyond our comprehension. Yet amidst the fear and uncertainty, there was a strange thrill a sense of adventure tinged with danger that spurred us to continue our interaction with the mysterious entity. As the night progressed and our session hummen with the Ouija board unfolded, each answer we received seemed to deepen the sense of disquiet that hung in the air. Whispers and shadows danced at the edges of our perception, and an unspoken tension settled over the cabin like a thick fog. Little did we know, our innocent curiosity had unwittingly unleashed forces that would soon spiral out of control, a darkness that lurked in the shadows, hungry for more than just a game. But that realization would come later, after the true horrors of our winter break escapade had been unearthed, peace by chilling peace. As the night deepened and our session with the Ouija board progressed, an unsettling atmosphere settled over the cabin. Shadows danced in the flickering candlelight, and the air grew heavy with an inexplicable tension. It was as though a veil had been lifted, revealing a world beyond our comprehension, a world teeming with unseen forces and ancient secrets. With each question we posed to the entity, the responses grew increasingly cryptic and unnerving. The planchette moved with a will of its own, spelling out words that seemed to materialize from the depths of the unknown. We asked about the entity's identity, its intentions, and the reason for its presence in the cabin but the answers we received only deepened the sense of unease that hung in the air. Hours slipped by unnoticed as we delved deeper into the mysteries of the Ouija board. 
our minds consumed by the enigmatic entity that had chosen to communicate with us. It was only when exhaustion threatened to overwhelm us that we reluctantly decided to end the session and retire to our respective rooms. But sleep did not come easily that night. Restless dreams plagued my mind, filled with visions of shadowy figures and whispered threats. I awoke several times, drenched in cold sweat, the feeling of being watched never leaving me. The following days passed in a blur of unease and tension. Strange occurrences began to plague the cabin with increasing frequency. Objects would move on their own. Strange noises would echo through the halls at night, and a pervasive sense of dread seemed to seep into every corner of the cabin. At first, we tried to rationalize away these occurrences, attributing them to the old age of the cabin and our overactive imaginations. But deep down, we knew that something far more sinister was at play, a malevolent force that had been unleashed by our ill-fated encounter with the Ouija board. As the days wore on, the entity's presence became more tangible, its influence extending beyond the confines of the Ouija board. We would hear whispers in the dead of night, feel cold drafts that seemed to carry with them a sense of malice, and catch glimpses of shadowy figures darting just out of sight. It was during one particularly chilling night that the entity's true intentions were revealed. As we gathered in the living room, seeking solace in each other's presence, the temperature in the cabin plummeted and an oppressive energy filled the air. And then it spoke. I am not here to play, the voice echoed through the room, chilling us to the core. I am here for something far more precious. Fear gripped us as we realized the gravity of the situation. We had unwittingly invited a malevolent entity into our midst, and now it sought to claim something from us, something that we could not comprehend. The nights grew longer, the entity's presence more menacing. We attempted to leave the cabin to escape its clutches, but each attempt was met with inexplicable obstacles, a blizzard that blocked our path, a car that refused to start, a map that led us turned in in circles. It soon became clear that we were trapped, trapped in a nightmare of our own making, with no escape in sight. And so we huddled together, seeking solace in each other's company, as the darkness closed in around us, and the entity's true intentions remained shrouded in mystery. The days stretched into a nightmarish blur as we grappled with the malevolent force that had ensnared us within the confines of the cabin. Every shadow seemed to whisper secrets of ancient horrors, and the once cozy atmosphere now felt like a prison of dread. Our attempts to reach out for help were met with frustration and disbelief. Calls to friends and family yielded no response, and our pleas for assistance were met with skepticism. It was as though the cabin had become a realm unto itself, cut off from the outside world by an unseen barrier. The entity's presence loomed over us like a dark cloud, its influence seeping into every aspect of our lives. Whispers echoed through the halls at night, taunting us with promises of unspeakable horrors. Shadows danced on the walls, taking on grotesque forms that seemed to mock our futile attempts at escape. But amidst the fear and uncertainty, a sense of camaraderie blossomed among us. We clung to each other, finding solace in our shared struggle against the unseen menace that had invaded our lives. Together, we scoured old books and online forums, searching for clues that might shed light on the entity's origins and motives. 
It was during one such research session that we stumbled upon a chilling revelation, the cabin's dark history. Long ago, it was said to have been the site of occult rituals and sinister ceremonies conducted by a group of individuals obsessed with delving into the mysteries of the beyond. The Ouija board, we learned, had been a focal point of these rituals, a conduit through which the practitioners sought to communicate with dark entities and gain forbidden knowledge. But their experiments had ended in tragedy, with the cabin earning a reputation as a place of supernatural terror. Armed with this newfound knowledge, we devised a plan to confront the entity once and for all. We gathered the tools we would need, a protective circle, holy water, and ancient incantations passed down through generations. As night fell and the cabin was cloaked in darkness, we prepared ourselves for the final showdown. With trembling hands and hearts filled with trepidation, we gathered in the living room, the Ouija board laid out before us like a sinister altar. The air crackled with tension as we began the ritual, calling upon the powers of light to banish the darkness that had taken root within the cabin. The atmosphere grew heavy with anticipation, and a sense of impending doom hung in the air like a thick fog. With each incantation, the energy in the room intensified, and we could feel the presence of the entity drawing closer. Shadows seemed to swirl around us, and the temperature plummeted, sending shivers down our spines. And then it happened. The entity's presence manifested before us, a swirling vortex of malevolent energy that threatened to consume us whole. But we stood our ground fortified by our collective determination and the protective circle we had formed. For hours we battled against the entity, our voices raised in ancient chants and prayers of protection. The cabin shook with the intensity of our struggle, and the air crackled with unseen forces. And then, with a final burst of energy, the entity was vanquished. A howling wind swept through the cabin carrying with it the remnants of the dark presence that had plagued us for so long. Exhausted but victorious, we collapsed to the floor, the weight of our ordeal finally lifting it from our shoulders. The cabin, once a place of terror and despair, now stood silent and still, as though the darkness had never existed. As we gathered around the dormant Ouija board, a sense of relief washed over us. We had faced our fears head on and emerged stronger for it. But deep down, we knew that the memories of that harrowing experience would stay with us forever, a testament to the fragility of the boundary between the living and the dead. And so we left the cabin behind, its secrets buried beneath layers of snow and time. But the echoes of our encounter with the supernatural would linger, a reminder of the thin line between curiosity and catastrophe. The aftermath of our confrontation with the entity left us shaken and wary. Though the immediate threat had been vanquished, the memory of the dark presence lingered like a shadow, casting a pall over our lives. In the days that followed, we struggled to come to terms with what had transpired. Strange occurrences continued to plague us. Objects would move on their own. Eerie whispers would echo through the halls at night. And a sense of unease seemed to permeate every corner of our existence. We sought solace in each other's company, finding comfort in the shared understanding of our ordeal. But beneath the surface, tension simmered, fueled by the unspoken fear that the entity had not been fully banished, that it still lingered, waiting for an opportunity to strike once more. Our research into the cabin's dark history 
yielded little in the way of answers. The events that had unfolded seemed to defy rational explanation, leaving us with more questions than we had started with. It was as though the entity had left behind a trail of confusion and uncertainty, a lingering reminder of its power. As weeks turned into months, the cabin became a place of dread, a haunting reminder of the horrors we had faced. We avoided the basement where the Ouija board had been discovered, the very thought of it sending shivers down our spines. But try as we might to move on, the entity's presence continued to make itself known. Strange dreams plagued our sleep, filled with visions of shadowy figures and whispered threats. We would wake in the dead of night, drenched in cold sweat, the feeling of being watched never far from our minds. It was during one such night that the entity made its presence known once more. As I lay in bed on the cusp of sleep, a chill swept through the room, and the air grew heavy with an oppressive energy. And then I heard it, the faint sound of whispers echoing from the darkness beyond my bedroom door. I froze, my heart pounding in my chest as the whispers grew louder, taking on a sinister tone that sent shivers down my spine. I called out to my friends, but no response came. The whispers seemed to surround me, taunting me with promises of doom and despair. I felt as though I was being pulled into a nightmare from which I could not awaken. And then, just as suddenly as it had begun, the whispers ceased, leaving behind an eerie silence that was almost worse than the sound itself. I lay there, trembling, until the first light of dawn crept through the curtains, banishing the darkness and the echoes of the entity's presence. In the days that followed, we debated what to do next. Some suggested leaving the cabin for good, while others believed that confronting the entity once more was the only way to find peace. But one thing was clear. We could not ignore the lingering shadow that the entity had cast over our lives. Whether through exorcism, cleansing rituals, or some other means, we knew that we had to confront the darkness that still clung to the cabin and to us. And so, with a mixture of fear and determination, we prepared ourselves for one final showdown, a battle against an unseen foe that had already claimed so much from us. As the days wore on, the tension within the cabin reached a fever pitch. Every creak of the floorboards, every whisper of the wind, seemed to carry with it a sense of impending doom. We knew that our final confrontation with the entity was inevitable, and we steeled ourselves for the battle to come. We spent hours researching ancient rituals and protective spells, gathering every tool and talisman that might aid us in our quest. The cabin became a makeshift fortress, its walls adorned with the symbols of protection and wards against malevolent forces. The night of the final confrontation arrived with an eerie stillness, as though the very air held its breath in anticipation. We gathered in the living room, our hearts pounding in our chests, as we prepared to face the darkness that had haunted us for so long. With trembling hands, we lit candles and incense, creating a circle of protection around us. We spoke words of power, invoking the forces of light and goodness to aid us in our battle against the entity. And then we began the ritual, a complex series of chants, gestures, and offerings designed to draw out the entity and banish it from our lives forever. The air crackled with energy, and the temperature in the cabin seemed to drop as the ritual took hold. At first, there was nothing, a tense silence that seemed to stretch on for an eternity. But then, slowly, we felt the presence of the entity growing stronger 
its malevolent energy swirling around us like a dark storm. Whispers filled the air, mocking us with promises of suffering and torment. Shadows danced on the walls, taking on grotesque forms that seemed to mock our efforts to banish them. But we stood firm, our voices raised in unison as we poured every ounce of our will into the ritual. The cabin shook with the intensity of our struggle, and the air hummed with unseen forces. And then, just when it seemed that all hope was lost, a blinding light filled the room, a pure, radiant energy that pushed back the darkness and banished the entity from our midst. We collapsed to the floor, exhausted but victorious, as the cabin fell silent once more. The air was heavy with the scent of incense, and a sense of peace settled over us, knowing that we had finally rid ourselves of the malevolent force that had plagued us for so long. In the days that followed, the cabin remained a place of calm and tranquility. The shadows no longer whispered secrets of ancient horrors, and the air no longer carried the chill of unseen malevolence. But the memory of our ordeal remained, a reminder of the thin line between the living and the dead, and the power of darkness to consume us if we let it. And so we left the cabin behind, its secrets buried beneath layers of time and snow. But the lessons we learned there would stay with us forever, a testament to the strength of the human spirit in the face of unspeakable darkness.